Hello guys and welcome to this ninth episode part two of my Computercraft tutorial series. Uh, in this ep or this part of this episode uh, we're going to continue on the build that I showed off in episode one. Uh, I'm also using an external editor here. Uh, uh, in my case this is Sublime Text 2. Pretty neat uh, editor. Uh, so to start out we're going to make some functions so you can connect to different peripherals without writing their actual name. So uh, like you saw in the build that uh, it can automatically detect if you added some peripherals and you don't have to go into the code and uh, do anything, it will uh, yeah, simply work. So uh, to do that you first have to wrap the actual uh, uh, wired modem which is uh, in this build on the right side and uh, I also changed the syntax here. I have an own computer craft syntax. And uh, there you have it, wrapped uh, peripheral. Uh, and then I can uh, do a, a method which returns all the connected uh, peripherals to that network. And to do that I can uh, simply do like peripherals, and this is just variable, so equals modem and using this one and get names remote like so this will return a table uh, with all peripherals in on the network so I'll just make that the local one I don't want to use it outside this program and uh, then we can loop through that uh, table so we can uh, find out what kind of peripheral it is so we know like when we continue now we know which peripheral is what so we can use the method on the peripherals we want to. So for index and let's make it connection uh, in pairs uh, peripherals do. So this will go through the entire table and uh, yeah and then we have another uh, method which is uh, peripheral get type like so and then I can uh, give it connection like so so now it will return the type of uh, the current uh, uh, peripheral in the table here and uh, this will return uh, um, the name of that peripheral like uh, when you connect a monitor to your uh, uh, network it uh, displays a name in the chat uh, stating that it's for example monitor 0 and then monitor 1 and monitor 2 and so on so it basically uses that first name only so if I do monitor like so okay so in this case if the peripheral with uh, or when you go through the table and that peripheral we hit is monitored and uh, we want to add that to a table. Uh, well, let's actual, actually create that table first so we have like the starter things uh, like so and we want monitor uh, we want the boiler it should be a different table uh, tank could be a different table like uh, the fuel tanks and oil tank uh, refinery and uh, uh, energy can be also one of its own so there we'll add uh, the peripherals to that table so we can uh, use that table later to use our methods so then if our uh, the peripheral we hit is a monitor, then uh, we want to add that to the p dot monitor table, and we want to add it to uh, uh, the p dot monitor table plus one index. So uh, yeah, in this case now it's nothing in the table, so this will become index one, and then next time it will become index two, and so on. and then we simply wrap the connection like so and then we can uh, continue to the next one 
uh, connection and uh, for the boiler it will get or I'm guessing a liquid boiler so uh, I will get this name liquid uh, fueled boiler firebox so solid is probably solid fueled firebox you could also add that here if you want to also connect to solid fuel just type or peripheral and uh, get type connection is that but uh, yeah I don't want to do that now okay and then we could do uh, almost the same thing except this time that it is a boiler it is not a monitor so we add it to the p.boiler table and then it's the same boiler plus one equals peripheral web connection so that's uh, how we can uh, connect to different things now I'm going to just write uh, the rest of this and uh, be right back Okay, so now you see I've uh, wrote the rest of the things which I'm using in this build. So uh, I'm pretty much using the same things over and over here, just uh, changing uh, whatever table I'm putting them in. Uh, the only thing is probably here. Uh, yeah, that's the only difference. Uh, because the refineries uh, are connected with uh, uh, proxies from uh, open peripheral which I showed off in a later episode um, or in earlier episode uh, and therefore it gets the name peripheral which doesn't really um, yeah everything connected to the proxy is probably a peripheral or yeah many things so therefore I I'm gonna check if it is a refinery and I didn't find any good methods to which or which only the refinery has so uh, what I did then is simply check if it had the method method is active which is a method it has that returns if it's active or not and the one I'm also using in this build and also I check if uh, it has get activation energy so I can uh, yeah, it doesn't crash when I do that and also I check if that activation energy is 25 which that uh, refinery does so yeah still some peripherals may connect to the refinery table but uh, yeah it should be fine <laughs> and uh, the rest is okay and here I have the else so if it didn't match anything of this then uh, that uh, peripheral was not or I don't want to add that so just yeah, it doesn't care about that so uh, with this I've filled this entire table with uh, all the peripherals on the network without actually writing a name uh, or, or of course I have this first name but uh, you don't have to care about the one and twos and threes and yeah just adds them and you have everything in your table and you can use methods on them so that's how you can dynamically add peripherals on your network without actually do, writing their name and and the next thing we're gonna do uh, is create a table which contains uh, like uh, default settings for our program and uh, and the reason I make it in the table is yeah it's uh, easier to uh, or yeah, it looks nicer uh, it's easy to write your uh, settings table to a file just use the text utils uh, serialize and then you just write it to a file and you can read it back up if you want to have some consistency and yeah and the reason I also have a settings file in or like yeah, default values in the first place is because if you want to for example change the background color of your program instead of going through all the or every time you'll call for the background color you can just change it there and the entire thing will change so well, first let's uh, create a, a file so if you want to use um, file savings and stuff like that so we can uh, save the background color to something else uh, yeah, I'll just create that 
I haven't actually used uh, this value in this build, but it's really easy to add, so you could do that if you wanted to. And I'm also going to have a default background color, so in my case I'm using black. Uh, I want a default text color, so you can change that as well. And white goes well in that. Uh, I also want the border color, uh, so you can uh, yeah, all the lines and uh, stuff around has another color, but uh, actually in my build I'm holding, I'm using the black color here as well. Uh, title, I use this as well uh, for the text above, above the, the screen, so you can simply change that. Let's just do yeah, power monitor. Uh, and then I have uh, the val or the variable that saves the uh, energy per second, which uh, the uh, engine's output. Uh, I also have the value saving the old energy amount because I have to save the energy amount every time and then subtract to find how much it increased. Then I have uh, two timers uh, here, which uh, um, there uh, I used to uh, use the timers uh, events. So every five seconds, the screen will update its value, and every sixty seconds, I have the screen to clear entirely, and yeah, then rebuild the screen, kind of. So uh, that's our settings table. So uh, we will use that in our other, other methods to yeah, just make it simpler. Uh, yeah. And another thing I did in my program, which uh, is just nice uh, for debug purposes, is uh, I created just a print and at the beginning here. So when I've added all the peripherals to the tables. I just display how many peripherals I got in total, so you know if the peripheral you added got connected or not. So I'm just gonna do like uh, new connections, and how many monitors I had, and then I could just do p dot mon, simple like that. Uh, how many steam boilers? Oops. Uh, p dot boiler like that, and I'll just uh, add the rest of this and uh, be right back. Okay, so here is here, and yeah, just continue the the way I went and uh, added everything. So now at the startup of or when you start this program, it will add all the peripherals, and then it will print out how many peripherals it got in each category. And next here is here I've added the a bit of code here. Uh, this is basically the same as um, my last episode, I believe, on progress bars. I'm using the same functions here, so uh, you can uh, watch that and uh, yeah, add yeah. Basically, the it's the functions to draw progress bars in text and lines with a simpler or in a simpler way. Uh, and I also changed here, so uh, I'm using the monitor one and. Yeah, you could do this differently if you want to, for example, if you want to have multiple monitors displaying this screen, you could easily do that with uh, just uh, in this functions, loop through the P monitor table and doing this to every uh, entry. Uh, I also think this will kind of bug out if you add another monitor, it will probably write this to that instead, but yeah. I also have here saving the size. This is yeah, all of this should be covered in the last episode. The only thing that I changed is this draw line uh, function to add a character. So uh, instead of having just the colored line, I want to have a character. So then I che uh, checked if the character is input. So in this case, I'm also using the draw line, and I didn't want to have any characters there. So it's only if this variable is filled, 
then I want to draw that character instead of uh, empty spaces. And yeah, that's basically the only change there is. Uh, I also made another function uh, in my program, which just centers the text. So it's yeah, a neat function to have. So we're going to have a y coordinate, a text variable. We want the color of the text. We want the color of the background. And yeah. And then it's as simple as using this uh, draw text uh, function. So we just use draw text. And first we need a x coordinate. And since I want to write this to the center of the screen, I have to uh, do the calculations to draw it to the center. It's basically the same as here. Uh, so uh, minus text divided by 2 plus 2. Uh, yeah, that should do it. And then I have the y coordinate, which uh, is given here. I have the color of the text, which is also given here. Uh, and the color of the background. So yeah, it's a pretty simple function, but it yeah, centers the text, and it's pretty neat to have. And the next function we're going to create is a way to get uh, the energy of all uh, connected energy. So let's just make or name it get energy. And uh, as we're, we're going to go through every energy connection there is on the network, uh, we're going to yeah we don't care about how many energy you have. We're just going to calculate the yeah, entire level of energy in your base. So, yeah, if you have multiple connected, it will uh, check that as well. So first, we need to create a variable containing the like uh, a starter value for the amount, since we're going to add all the amounts to this one, and we're also going to have a variable for the capac capacity on the network. And then we uh, simply loop through our peripheral table up here, uh, the p dot energy, since that that contains all our energy uh, peripherals. So uh, index, and let's just call it energy cell uh, in pairs p dot energy do. So now this will go through an entire table, and uh, yeah, then we simply do. Um, uh, a little check to see if that function actually exists so we don't crash. So if energy cell get energy store. So if this method exists uh, then we want to add to the amount. So um, this amount equals amount plus energy cell get energy stored and I have to supply to the side which is yeah, unknown which as you saw in the uh, earlier episode about energy storage and basically the same thing here only uh, this is dynamic and checks everything so uh, yeah now I add everything or all the amounts is amounts plus energy cells so first this is zero plus whatever energy you check first so it's a 100 energy, then it's 100 plus the new energy, which for example is 100 again, and it's 200, and so on. And then I also have to uh, check the capacity. So if energy cell get max energy stored, uh, that should be. Uh, and this is the function returning that. Then it's basically the same. Get max energy stored and no, like so. So that basically it. Now, I, now these two values should contain the amount and the capacity of the entire network. And we just at the end of this loop we return those two values. So uh, pretty neat. Now we get a function returning entire energy level. 
And uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, make another function which uh, returns uh, all the tank information. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So again, we're going to create a variable with amount, and we're going to create one with capacity. Uh, and then we're going to loop through the thing again. This time using the tank or uh, peripherals, obviously. Uh, so first we want to create uh, the table from uh, the tank. So let's just call the tank table. Uh, get tank info. Oh no. You've also seen this before, it's uh, yeah, the same as uh, every episode about uh, open peripheral liquids. This is how we get that information. And as uh, in uh, the iron tanks, um, the actual information is stored in uh, this table um, index number one. So uh, I don't care about the rest of this. So I'm just going to overwrite the tank table with uh, tank table one. So now it should be the correct one. And then I'll check if if I got the tank table and uh, yeah, if I got the tank table, that should do it. Then we want to have amount equals amount plus tank table amount. And since this is a table we're returning and not a method, uh, we could uh, do the capacity in here as well. And another thing which I actually want to do is uh, instead of uh, uh, this will check the entire amount of liquid in the entire base, but I want to uh, check fuel and uh, oil by itself. I don't want it to add them together. So therefore I could for example, do a check here. So uh, I'll input a name. So if I, for example, write oil, I want to get all the oil in the base. If I write fuel, I want to get all the fuel in the base, and uh, yeah, any other liquid. Um, so uh, then I'll simply uh, uh, yeah. If you write something which is um, with the uh, big and small letters, I don't want that, so I'll just convert it to small letters all over. So then I'll just use the string lover function, and this yeah makes it all in small case letters. And then here I'll add a check. So if tank table and tank table name equals name, this is um, yeah in fuel and the oil case it's in lowercase as well. Uh, you could also, yeah, you can actually just do that. So in, in case it is in uppercase. So if whatever you write here is equal to that name of the one or the tank you're currently looking at, then we want to add that to the capacity and the amount. And then we return the amount and the capacity. So uh, simple as that, and then we want to create another function which uh, will connect to the steam boilers. So we got get all the information about that. So get steam boiler, and then I want I want to get all the information about all the steam boilers. So. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of information. So uh, to be able to read that information after this function has been run in an easier manner than uh, yeah, instead of trying to find out which polar is what, then yeah, we're going to create a table containing all the information about all the boilers. And then we loop through the entire boiler boiler table in Pairs like so. So uh, the same uh, loop as we have done before, except we're going to go on the boiler table. 
And then we want to uh, get the tank information from the boiler. So let's just call it boiler tanks equals tank info. So yeah, basically the same, uh, not there, but here. Get tank info. This will return the table of all the tanks in the steam boiler, so which because it has three, three. It says water, steam, and fuel, or yeah, whatever fuel you give it. Uh, yep, yeah. and we. And this is stored in a special way. Uh, water uh, is contained in uh, the boiler tank table slot number one, so the same as here. So I'll just save this as as water boiler tanks one. And I also want to save uh, steam, which is in the table two. and fuel which is in boiler tank 3 so now we have easy access to each of those liquids and then we want to actually add that information to the table so steam boiler and index so uh, I'll get the number of the boiler so uh, the first one will be the first one and the second one will be the second one and so on then we do like so. So and then we want to inside the steam boiler table, which we created here, we want to have a water table. And inside that water table we want to have the amount saved, which is water amount. Since we saved the water here, we can simply call water amount, which is the same as same as uh, boiler tanks one dot amount but yeah water amount then we want capacity equals water capacity simple as that and then we can do the same for the steam amount equals yeah we can just copy this except we want to change to steam and we want to change to steam and then again the same for uh, fuel fuel so obviously here you uh, already see the advantages of using an external editor because this is a lot faster than writing this in in the minecraft so then uh, i want to uh, Save the, val no, the temperature of this steam boiler, so I'll just create uh, a variable called the temp for temperature, so equals boiler, uh, which is uh, the value you get here. So it basically, every loop uh, through it will be uh, one of the boilers. So get temperature should be that function. Uh, and you also want to save if it's active or not and that is another function which is is burning yeah so uh, that's that and then at the end of the lift we want to return the steam boiler table so this will yeah basically return all connected steam boilers so uh, to go a bit into the game now again, I'm going to just test all these functions and you can also see that they should work. So uh, yeah, be right back. Okay guys, so now we're back in game and uh, let's test this program out. So here you see the, the thing we added. So one monitor, uh, one steam boiler, two liquid tanks, four refineries and one energy cell, which is the amount we do have. So uh, let's test this again with uh, the testing things I had uh, in the last program. So, for example, if I connect one more liquid uh, uh, tank and one more steam boiler. And I'll run this program again. Uh, now we have two steam boilers and we have three liquid tanks. So it simply or it works. So uh, let's test out uh, the functions we did. 
So first we have get energy, which should uh, return the entire energy amount. And yeah, that uh, should be correct. I see I only have this one. And get tanks, and then I can check oil. And that should be good. Tanks, fuel. And that should probably also be nice. Uh, ah, yeah, that's why. Uh, because I have now I have two oil tanks. As you see, this is one. So this is should should have been the same as this one, or they are the same. But as I've made the function uh, contain everything, it also is adding this to uh, the amount. So it's pretty. It works nice. Uh, then we want to check the steam boiler function. And yeah, as you see, it returns the table. You can't see the entire table, but uh, it returns the table of everything. So I see the capacity of the water, the amount of water, the amount of fuel, the capacity of fuel, if it's active, what's the temperature, and the steam. So it works perfectly. Uh, also, the uh, functions on the screen should also work, but I won't test those because they're basically exactly the same as the last episode, I believe, which I went through progress bars but um, this episode have gone very long so uh, this is the end of this part and um, yep yeah, see you in the next part where we'll probably go through the rest of the code uh, to do this program so see you then